welcome back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We have a great show for you today. We'll be covering four different topics, the first one being the Red Sox extending star young pitcher Brian Bayo. We'll be talking about that first. Uh, then for segments two and three, we'll be talking about the new spring training breakout games. Um, we'll be slating that to two segments. You'll see why. Um, and finally, uh, some spring training standings as well. Uh, so before we do that, I'd like to ask you to please like and follow the show. Um, it really does help a lot. We get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read right in the air, please use the link gsmcpodcast.net. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to not only see my great content, but everyone else, all the other creators on this con- on this channel, they make great content as well. So um, thank you so much for that, and let's get into our first segment here. Um, and our first segment is going to be about Brian Bayo and the Boston Red Sox. So yesterday I talked about this a little bit, which was that um, the Red Sox and Brian Bayo were discussing an extension. Um, for the young star pitcher for Boston. Um, it was part of my other note segment because they were just discussing it and they said they gotten far, but we didn't really know if it was going to fully happen yet. Like We didn't know if it was official. Um, today we know it is uh, Kylie McDaniel and John Morosi, two uh, fairly reliable guys. Morosi not really that reliable when it comes to uh, planes and the Toronto Blue Jays, but we still give him a pass. Um, so yeah, they extended him, and this just gonna be my thoughts on it. So uh, first, uh, the contract itself is six years, fifty-five million. Um, it has a seventh-year club option for twenty-one million dollars, assuming all the years are um, activated and including the club, club option at the end. Um, it covers two years of free agency as well as, of course, the arbitration and uh, tendering deadline as well, which was going to be in his contract before he hits free agency, like everyone else. Um, so yeah. Um, that's what the contract is. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this deal. Um, yeah, I, I love this deal for the Red Sox. I think getting him at six years, $55 million, is an absolute steal of a contract for a guy I'm really high on. Um, the seventh year as well, $21 million. Um, that's, I mean, at, we don't know where we're going to be with baseball contracts at that point in the future. And I think getting this, getting that is definitely a steal. I mean, he could be one of the best pitchers in baseball at that time, and you would have him for only $21 million. So, I personally think it's a great deal for the Red Sox. Um, you know, I've talked a lot about on this show about Brian Bayo. I don't know why that is. I think it's just how the you know how the cards have fallen. You know, simply put, that um, we've talked about the Red Sox a lot, and because of that, we have to talk about Brian Bayo a lot because he is one of their better players, one of their better young players. Um, so yeah, I'm. Uh, so as, as you've, if you've listened to the podcast a good amount, you know I am extremely high on Brian Bayo. I think he's a superstar in the making. I love his pitches. I think there's some of the best pure pitches in baseball. I think he's a lot of room to grow as well. And also going off that, I think the Red Sox did a lot to help him this offseason. Um, hiring pitching coach Andrew Bailey, I think, is one of the better guys in the business. Um, I think that was a great one as well. Um, so I think that was a great deal to uh, help the uh, Red Sox as well, and not only the Red Sox, but Bayo as well. Like I said, I really I really believe in Bayo. Um, I think this is a guy that's going to be a future ace of the staff for the Red Sox or whatever team he's pitching on. I assume it'll be the Red Sox now that they've extended him. But, yeah, I, I'm very high on Brian Bayo. Um, I, th- I think he's going to be a future superstar in this league, and I think he's shown that over the past few seasons. Um, I think the Red Sox made a great decision here. I mean... This contract, in my opinion, is really cheap. If he plays up to his potential and he becomes what I believe he will become and obviously what the Red Sox believe he will will become, um, I think this is an absolute steal of a deal. Um, You know, one of the things... I was watching the uh, Red Sox Braves game today on ESPN before I went on the show, and um, they had, you know, they had Craig Breslow on, who is the Red Sox GM, and Breslow mentioned something that I think is also a very important aspect when you have to look at this deal which is the fact of the Red Sox have had a lot of criticism for not having homegrown talent, and specifically homegrown pitching. And Bayo represents both of those things in one. Um, you know, um, Bayo is a homegrown pitcher. He's a homegrown prospect who rose through the ranks, got pl- people excited, came up, and did his thing. Um, he obviously hasn't pitched up to his full potential yet, but even so, even with his first years in the big leagues, he hasn't been that bad. Um, you can see the building blocks of his future being there already. And Again, going back to the uh, you know homegrown thing, I don't think a lot of people want to admit it, but I do think being homegrown, um, playing for a team you went through your whole career with, I think that is very important. Um, I think that it is something teams uh, will pay a lot for. I think that if you are a homegrown player, they will pay more for you. Um, like the Mets, um, going off an example with this, they have Pete Alonso hitting free agency, obviously. It's you know been a little while since they've had a homegrown superstar, I think. 
you know, maybe Brandon Nimmo is the last guy and he's still on the team. I mean, DeGrom as well, but obviously he left. So I think the Mets are going to have to pay a little bit more for Pete Alonso just because he is homegrown, because the fans are more attached to him. The fans run this business um, because they bring in the money. So I think you have to cater to the fan base. And I think a lot of fan bases like homegrown stars. They like seeing a guy come through the ranks of the minors, go to the major leagues with the same team, and become a star. And I don't blame them. I mean, that's really cool. I've seen it with the Mets multiple times. I've seen it with other teams as well. It is very, very cool. It's a very cool thing. Sorry for the uh, crinkling. Um, but, um, so yeah, I think that's something you have to pay for if you're a team. You have to realize that this is the reality of the situation you're in. You have to pay more if they're a homegrown guy, which Bayo is. Not only, not only that, homegrown pitching. Pitching is so hard to develop. I don't think a lot of people understand how hard pitching is to develop with the injuries they go through, the stress on their arm by the time they're young. Especially high school guys or guys who have signed, been signed internationally that were young when they signed. They have a lot of stress in their arm already. And it's always really hard to not only get a pitcher healthy throughout his minor leagues and go up to the big leagues and see going, but keep them good with all the stress that's on them and all the ways they've had to perform. So I think having Bayo here, um, extending him, making him a big part of your future, um, having him as a guy Red Sox fan can point to and say, okay, this is a guy we're building around. This is a franchise cornerstone. I think it's very important. Um, Bayo's going to start opening day, I assume, now, especially with the unfortunate Lucas Giolito news, which you've talked about it the past few days now. Um, so I think that's even more important as well. Um, so, yeah, um, definitely um, definitely big news here for the Red Sox. Again, I love the deal. I think it's, I think it's a great deal. I think it's a great move. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for Red Sox fans. I'm finally getting some news. And I'm excited for Brian Bayo. You know, he's a young kid, gets his big payday already. I think that's something that's really important to a lot of players nowadays is getting your payday early because you never know what could happen with your career. Um, I mean, looking at recent examples, Cody Bellinger, um, he didn't get the deal he wanted, Matt Chapman, Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery. Obviously, those are different kinds of examples because they're free agents and Bayo is a young prospect who's still coming up. But I think it's just an um, indictment of how crazy baseball can be, how much you don't know what's really going on. You don't really know what could happen in your career. You know, these guys thought they were going to get mega contracts, and they're settling for one, two-year, three-year deals. So, um, you know, I think it's really interesting with that kind of stuff. I mean, you look at so many players who have turned down early extensions and then not gone on to uh, perform that well. I think it's very jarring, and I think it's something that a lot of young players are seeing, and they don't want it to happen. Um, I mean, I think of recent examples now of Corbin Carroll, of Julio Rodriguez, guys like that who have been extended early. And, um, you know, Brian Bale is just another guy uh, coming in. Uh, with those, uh, with that type of situation. Um, also, with this, I think it's more difficult to extend a starting pitcher because of the reasons I've mentioned. Um, from what I've said, you know, um, the fact is starting pitchers just have more wear and tear on their arm. They're more likely to get injured, more likely to not perform that well in the future. Um, so I think the Red Sox extending Bayo here, with him being a starting pitcher, with all the things I've mentioned, I think that it shows how much they how much they like him, how much they enjoy him, and how much they want to build around him. So I'm really excited to watch Bayo in um, in the future with the Red Sox, and um, you know what's going to happen with him, and um, where his career goes, and how the suspension affects him. So yeah, super excited about that, and uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say about Bayo. So because of that, we're going to go into just now um, the Red Sox and how it affects them for the future and this year as well. So looking for the future, um, I think one thing the Bayo extension does bring is that you bring um, you solidify that pitching rotation a little bit more. You know, after Bayo, you don't really have any long-term guys. I mean, I've talked about the Red Sox a lot and their pitching staff a lot, but just to recap, you know, you have Nick Pavetta, you have Tanner Houck, you, you know, you have Garrett Whitlock, guys like this who, you know, they're good players, but I just don't think any of them are in the long-term future for the Red Sox. I think Bayo is, and I think they've shown that Bayo is now with this extension. So it's not really that surprising um, that he is getting this extension. But you now solidify your ace of the future. You know, you don't have to spend huge money in for agency to uh, be able to solidify that rotation. You know, you guys got guys like Corbin Burns, like Max Freed coming up next offseason. You're not now forced to pay them the big bucks because you have no one at the top of that rotation. I still think the Red Sox should get someone. I think a Jordan Montgomery is so perfect for them. Um, I think he's a great number two behind Bayo when Bayo does uh, go, in the, you know, develop in the future. But at the same time, you're not forced. Over, you're not overly forced now because you have the simple fact of re-signing your star young pitcher, who is going to be a big factor for you in the future. 
So, um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, uh, some great news for Red Sox fans. And, um, yeah, uh, I think it really helps their future. Really, I think it really helps their outlook. Um, I think a lot of Red Sox fans are kind of being bleak with their future, with their, where they were this year, where they are this year, I should say. Um, and I think having Bayo here for the long run really helps that. You know, he's gonna, he's gonna be there when your young core comes up, like Marcelo Mayer, Kyle Teal, Sedano Rafaela, Nick York. Um, you know, other guys as well you draft. So, yeah, um, Red Sox fans finally have a building block in that organization, especially in the pitching core. I mean, you had, again, Rafael Devers in the hitting. You have Tristan Casas, who's a really good guy, um, who you could probably build around. You have Will Urabreu, who I think is important. But you don't really have anyone in the pitching staff, and I think Bayo represents that. And uh, good, great job by the Red Sox to be able to uh, to do that and uh, get him extended, and uh, yeah, really, really good job by them, and uh, I'm glad they finally have a plan for the organization, and they're uh, they're moving forward with it, so uh, good for them. Um, just the Red Sox outlook for this year, um, I've talked about the Red Sox so much on this podcast, I don't know why it's come to that, but it has, um, um, so... I'm I'm gonna just be I'm gonna look I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but I wanted to touch on it because we did have some Red Sox news, um, and that is you know I don't have them, uh, I have them being the worst in the NL, AL East. Now, again, um, they're not a horrible team. They're not even a bad team. They're just not that good. They're just me. They're just the definition of mediocrity right now. And in a division where you have the Rays, the Blue Jays, the Orioles, the Yankees, with all these. With what they've added, specifically the Orioles and the Yankees, you're not going to be that high. Um, you know, like yesterday, I had, I think I had them barely top ten in the AL, which is, um, you know, not really that great because there are only 15 teams in the AL, of course. So, um, yeah, not great for this season, but uh, hopefully they can, uh, they can improve in the future. Um, again, I think Bale, Bale being extended really helps him be kind of more chill now um you he can just focus on playing baseball he doesn't have to work on the contract situation because i knew we, t- we talked about it a while ago as well not even yesterday like a week or so before that he was talking about an extension with the red sox so this is something that's obviously been in the works for a little while so uh really excited for him to uh, get that off his shoulder um you know to uh not worry about it anymore and uh, have a place for him and his future his family as well he can build you know a home there um, I think that's always really important for a player to know you're going to be at a place for a long time. Bayo now knows that, and uh, it's definitely really exciting uh, for the Red Sox, for Bayo, and everyone involved. And uh, great job by Craig Breslow to get this done. You know, he's gotten a lot of flack for what he hasn't done this offseason, but the moves he has done, I liked. I liked the G- I thought the Giolito signing was okay before he went under. Um, obviously, he's, he's not supposed to know that would happen. Um, I like the Tyler O'Neill trade a lot. Um, I like them on the signings they did in the bullpen. Um, I think they should have gone after more guys, but again, I think that's more of an ownership decision than him. So the moves he has done, including now this Bayo extension, um, I am excited about, and I think he's done a good job with. So, uh, yeah, uh, good job by, uh, Craig Breslin, good job by the Red Sox to get this done. Uh, so that's our first segment here today. Uh, we'll be going to break, but our second segment is going to be about Cactus League breakout games. Um, we're going to explain more about what this is, um, going into our next segment. So, uh. Yeah, because I think a lot of people don't really know about it. So, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about that, and uh, see you after the break. Uh, Thanks.